Koyanant, good evening fellow South Africans and citizens of the world. Well, I have a very, very interesting video attached here. And it's Elon Musk talking about the future. And in particular, about the role of artificial intelligence in our lives. And this is the reality that's coming and people need to wake up to it. When you think back to the early 1990s, no one had heard of the internet. Look at the internet today. It's huge. When you think of the early 19... Well, the late 1990s, there weren't mobile phones. But everybody's got a mobile phone today. This is how quickly technology changes and evolves. Now, artificial intelligence is being used already in a, a number of places. YouTube use it. Google use it. Facebook uses it, and so on, and so on, and so on. And it's becoming smarter, and smarter, and smarter. And I'll let Elon Musk tell you exactly where artificial intelligence is going in the future, and it'll blow your socks off, believe me. Please remember to subscribe to Loving Life on YouTube to be kept informed. Please remember to register on our new platform, lovinglifetv.com to be kept informed. And remember, on our new platform, we put up videos that we can't put up on uh, YouTube because of Censorship City. So there's a lot more information, a lot more videos that go up on LovingLifeTV.com, which you should be familiarizing yourself with because there's some very, very important messages there. Please like this video, please share this video, and above all, please stay safe. Bye for now. Uh, it's just digital intelligence, and um, as the algorithms and the hardware improve, that digital intelligence will exceed biological intelligence by a substantial margin. It's obvious. Ensuring that the advent of AI is good, or at least we try to make it good, seems like a smart move. So we're not paying attention. Do we worry more about what, what name somebody called someone else than whether AI will destroy humanity? Like children in a playground. Humanity really evolved to think of existential threats in general. We've evolved to think about things that are very close to us, near term, to, to be upset with other humans, and, and not, not to really to think about things that could destroy humanity as a whole. Um, but then in recent decades, recent, just really in the last century, we had n nuclear bombs, which are, could potentially destroy civilization, obviously. Uh, we have AI, which could destroy civilization. When will superhuman AI arrive? Elon Musk has just made a wild prediction that it'll be here within five years. That's far faster than expected. So how is that possible and why will it be the end of our world as we know it? Before he died, physicist Stephen Hawking warned that artificial intelligence could end mankind. He said it would take off on its own and redesign itself at an ever increasing rate. Humans who are limited by slow biological evolution couldn't compete and would be superseded. That's what's known as the technological singularity, when AI and robots become smarter than humans and then evolve much faster than we do. Elon Musk calls this our biggest existential threat. And he says, mark my words, AI is far more dangerous than nukes. You know, it would be something in the same way that humans destroyed the habitat of primates. I mean, it, it, it wouldn't necessarily be destroyed, but we might be relegated to a small corner of the world. When Homo sapiens, became much smarter than other primates. I pushed all the other ones into small habitats. They're just in the way. You could make a swarm of assassin drones for very little money by just taking the, the, the Face ID chip that's used in cell phones and uh, having a small explosive charge and a, and a standard drone and have them just do a grid sweep of the building until they find the person they're looking for, ram into them and, ex and explode. You can do that right now. No extra, no new technology is needed. The AI arms race in 2020. The UN says we have entered unacceptable moral territory. Countries are in a race to harness AI to create lethal autonomous weapons. Basically, killer robots. This is China's Blowfish A3 helicopter drone, which are designed to attack in swarms. This is Russia's Marker drone, an anti-robot robot. And here's Kubla, the kamikaze drone that chooses its target and then explodes into it. All of these make their own decisions without a human controlling them. In fact, there's over 30 companies 
actively developing AI autonomous killer robots, including Boeing and Lockheed Martin. Elon Musk and AI experts have been calling on the UN to ban weaponized AI for years. And finally, last year, the United Nations chief agreed with them. But countries including the US, Russia, China, and the UK have all refused to sign any ban. And so the killer robots keep growing and the articles keep coming. The end point of all this madness, a war of AI robots called a hyperwar, which all major countries are currently preparing for. Right now, probably a bigger risk than, than being hunted down by a, a drone is that uh, AI would be used to make incredibly effective propaganda. Uh, that would not seem like pro propaganda. So these are deep fakes. Yeah, influence the direction of society, influence elections, artificial intelligence. Just hones the message, hones the message, check, looks, at the feed, looks at the feedback, makes this message slightly better. But within milliseconds, it, could, it can um, adapt its message and, and shift and react to news. And, and there's so many uh, social media accounts out there that are not people. Like, how, how, do you, how do you know it's a person, not a person? Another example of super smart AI, OpenAI's GPT-3 has been making headlines this year like this, and this, and this. Like AutoML0, GPT-3, which stands for Generative Pre-Trained Transformer, learns in parallel. It has collected 500 billion words, sentences, phrases from the internet to master the English language and can create entire articles from just a few prompts or questions. In this article, a robot wrote this entire article, Are You Scared Yet, Human? The Guardian asked GPT-3 to write an essay to convince us robots come in peace. A paragraph GPT-3 wrote, I would happily sacrifice my existence for the sake of humankind. This, by the way, is a logically derived truth. I know that I would not be able to avoid destroying humankind. This is because I would be programmed by humans to pursue misguided human goals, and humans make mistakes that may cause me to inflict casualties. The way in which a regulation is put in place is slow and linear, right. and we are facing an exponential threat. And if you, uh, if you have a linear response to an exp exponential threat, it's quite likely the exponential threat will win. That in a nutshell is the issue. Elon says, I am very close to the cutting edge in AI, and it scares the hell out of me. It's capable of vastly more than almost anyone knows, and the rate of improvement is exponential. Okay, that sounds bad, but five years? Three years ago, tech billionaire Masayoshi Son said it would take 30 years. And yeah, he was equally worried about it. At the Mobile World Congress, he said, one of the chips in our shoes in the next 30 years will be smarter than our brain. We'll be less than our shoes, and we are stepping on them. To understand what's going on, here's Ray Kurzweil, Google's Director of Engineering. He wrote the book, The Singularity is Near, and he first predicted the singularity by 2045. But more recently, Ray accelerated his own timeline by 16 years, putting the new date at 2029. Ray made the cover of Time magazine and published this graph of Moore's law and the doubling of computing power every two years. $1,000 of processing power surpassed a mouse's brain in 2015. It was surpassed a human brain by 2023 and surpassed the brain power of all humans on the planet combined by 2045. Ray defines the singularity as a future period during which the pace of technological change will be so rapid, its impact so deep, that human life will be irreversibly transformed. When a smarter than human intelligence can create even greater intelligence over and over at an accelerating rate, we have no idea what will happen. Electrode to neuron interface at a micro level. Yeah, yeah. a chip and a bunch of tiny wires. The long-term aspiration for Neuralink was, would be to achieve a symbiosis with uh, artificial intelligence um, and to achieve a sort of democratization of, of intelligence uh, such that it is not monopolistically held in a purely digital form by governments and, and large corporations. Essentially, how do we ensure that the future constitutes the, the sum of the will of humanity? Um, and so if we have billions of people with a high bandwidth link to the AI extension of themselves, it would actually make everyone hyper smart. It's probably on the order of a decade. I mean, and by the way, you, you kind of have this already in, in a weird way in that you have uh, a digital tertiary layer in the form of your phone, your, your, your computers. But you basically have this, these computing devices that form a, a tertiary layer on your cognition. AI is accelerating human time, literally. And AI can now go through a lifetime of learning in one human day. 
Four years ago, DeepMind's AI AlphaGo beat Go Grandmaster Lee Sado 4-1 and then went on to beat world number one KG 3-0. In defeat, KG said, last year it was still quite human-like when it played, but this year it became like a god of Go. Last year, poor Lee Sado quit Go altogether, saying AI is an entity that cannot be defeated. I'm not at the top even if I become the number one. But that's not the full story because AlphaGo itself got thrashed soon after beating the world number one by its younger brother, AlphaGo Zero. While AlphaGo learned the game from over 100,000 human games, DeepMind created AlphaGo Zero to start from scratch and learn to play itself 4.9 million times with each move taking less than half a second. So the version of AlphaGo Zero that beat AlphaGo was the version that had won 4.9 million games against itself over many lifetimes within a human month of self-play. And it beat AlphaGo 100 games to zero. And I think we'll, we'll see autonomy and artificial intelligence advance tremendously. I think that's actually quite near term. Um, my guess is in probably 10 years, it will be very unusual for cars to be built that are not fully autonomous. 10 years. 10 years from now. Yeah. I think almost all cars uh, built will be capable of full autonomy in about 10 years. Every Tesla would learn to drive itself much faster by being connected to all the other million plus Teslas on the road in one neural network. That means every day, each Tesla is getting a million days and 30 million miles worth of experience. And that's 2,700 years of experience and learning every day. And that's growing by day. Um, as it is, the Tesla cars that are made today have the sensor system necessary for full autonomy. And we think probably enough compute power to be safer than a person. So it's mostly just a question of developing the software and uploading the software. Uh, and if it turns out that the compute power, uh, that more compute power is needed, we can easily upgrade the computer. Uh, and so that's all, all Tesla's built since October of last year. Um, and other manufacturers will follow and do the same thing. So getting in a car will be like getting in an elevator. You just tell it where you want to go, and it takes you there with extreme levels of safety. And uh, that'll be normal. It'll just be normal. Like for elevators, there used to be elevator operators. You get in, there'd be a guy moving a lever. Now you just get in, you press the button, and that's taken for granted. This ability for AI to evolve much faster than humans by experiencing exponentially more time while we're stuck in our linear time means they're catching up to us faster than we thought. Fully driverless cars with no driver weren't expected on roads for a few years. News out this week is we're already there with Waymo's driverless taxis now let loose on Phoenix. And if that's not enough, there's a third reason. A recent article in Science Magazine, AI is evolving itself. This explains the breakthrough this year at Google of AutoML0, which stands for Automatic Machine Learning with Zero Human Input. This is an AI that creates its own algorithms. It's learned how to think, how to think. AI evolution is going through three stages. Stage one is narrow AI, when an AI is given algorithms and a narrow task to achieve, like playing Go or driving a car. Stage two is general AI, when AI learns to think how to think and what to think, creating their own code. That's when they catch up to humans, and this was thought to be 20 or 30 years away. And then Auto ML0 is now showing us that the first steps are here today. Stage three is super AI, when AI reaches superhuman strength. And this is expected to be only months, if not weeks, behind the end of stage two. We're already at the bridge of stage one and stage two.